everyone, it's Kiri, and if you follow me on Instagram or have noticed my intro clip, you have seen this set of dolls. However, I haven't posted anything about them on YouTube yet, so these are the dolls that I'll be working on in this video. Stay tuned to the end for more photos of the final looks. I made this collection earlier this year for a show at the Doll Artist Collective. The Doll Artist Collective is an online collective on Instagram. I started with my doll art friends, Podly Dolls, Miss Cerise Dolls, and Color to the Bone. It's a place where we have online group and solo exhibitions, as well as guest artists, solo shows. We do tips and tricks on Tuesdays, feature other artists on Fridays, and more. Lots of fun going on over there, so check it out on Instagram if you haven't already. So each of us in the collective have one solo show a year, and this was my 2022 solo. I called it Laboratory Escape 2. It's the second time I've made this type of series of dolls and they're, it's a set of fairy dolls and their backstory was that they were collected for scientific experiments and they escaped from the laboratory and their wings and clothing and skin has like remnants from the tests that were performed on them. So you see these li little scientific words and symbols on each of the dolls. And when I work in a collection, I typically do it in sort of an assembly line. So in this video, I'm walking through the steps of the entire collection. So not a lot of face up footage in this one, but I'll be sharing a lot of how I made all the little details. So to start with, I'm just prepping the dolls and painting their head or scalp if they need it. And um, if not, like this one, I'm just using some purple hair. So, and, so the scalp's are already purple from this particular doll so I'm just leaving it and rooting her with this this is like a felting wool I knew I wanted to give her like a kind of an afro faux hawk type thing and that worked out really good for that then I'm using some ink to dye up some of the laces so when uh, when I want to have a co cohesive collection I dye some of the fabrics to kind of go together I also made these little strips that with my logo on them and then these little uh, fabric beads and some chains with beads and little shoes for each of the dolls. Then I'm just going to share how I made one of the tops. They were all sort of similar but in different different styles and shapes but I just got some vinyl and uh, sort of held it up to the body and sewed it to kind of tailor it to the figure. And I ended up using another piece of fabric where I cut it in a different shape to give her like a collar to wrap it around and snap in the back of her neck. But this is kind of basically how I start. So I did some stitching under the chest to give it more shape and added a snap behind her neck. And then I'm going to add some eyelets to the sides to add some straps so it'll snap in the back. have these tiny eyelets and I use this tool called a crop a dial it's priceless I use it more than just about any tool I have so if you're interested in the supplies that I use the link is in the description box below to my Amazon storefront if you do purchase from there I get a small commission but uh, I, I, I just have all of my supplies listed there uh, as much as I can think of and a little bit of information on how I use them I love using these eyelets on my costumes. I feel like the little bit of metal kind of elevates the look a little bit. Once I finished all the tops, I distressed them a little with some, with a lighter or some paints or just giving them a bit of distressing, making them look a little tattered. The base of the skirt I'm making out of lace that I just kind of ripped to shreds. It's, it's, I just kind of tore it in half and then some, made some strips out of other dyed fabrics and mixed that up with some other trims that matched. I found these little clips are really helpful when adding layers and sewing. Now I'm making these, I call them snippet strips and I that name came from kind of mixed media textile art where you take a long strip of fabric and then add different details to them and add interest. And I, it's one of my favorite things and that's how I kind of adapted that style to these skirts that I make. Each of the strips has some sort of embroidery or beading or just layers of different textiles. And I just made them all different. 
And they also have some labels with some of the laboratory symbols or lettering on them. So here's the skirt all put together. This is for, uh, I think, Twyla, maybe. But lots of layers, and it, these take forever. But I really enjoy the time that I put into them. Giving her a little specimen tab. So onto the bodies, I since when I'm showing a lot of the skin, I will do take the time to do some carving and sanding off of the seams on the body a little bit. And that's what I did with these because I'd be I was going to be adding some of the transfers to the different ar for, to their arms and legs and things. So in one of my previous videos, I shared some of the workings of these tattered fairies and. Uh, laboratory fairies and I didn't share how I do some of the transfer work and so here I'm showing so transferring some of these I get these pattern papers and paper with words on them and then I'll use some Mod Podge and glue them to the vinyl this is before I add any sealant and then as you can see I'm just scraping away that paper after I wet it and that's just what I do for part of the sort of mixed media collaging that I do to their face. This is a little bit of behind the scenes of the wings and a little bit of her face up. So my show was coming up very quickly, so I didn't have time to film a lot of the face up work. So I'm just showing a little bit here, but I thought you guys would be interested in seeing the behind the scenes of making all of the intricate costumes. So here are the final looks. There were seven dolls in this collection. They've all since sold, but I hope to revisit the style again in 2023. I really enjoy making them. By the way, I want to mention I have a couple of downloadables that are new in my Etsy shop. The link is in the description box below. One of them is a face-up step-by-step printable, and the other is how to price one-of-a-kind doll art or artwork with a calculator template to help artists come up with fair pricing that works for them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye!